The answer to this question is fiercely debated between the Jews and Arabs who live in Israel and their surrounding neighbor states. It seems as though the entire world gets involved when it comes to the ownership of the land of Israel. It is rather significant that not a single country sides with the territorial boundaries God ordained and preserved in his word. The deed to the land of Israel clearly states that the Jews are the original and only legitimate owners defined by geographical references. Genesis chapter 15 verse 18 says, In the same day the Lord made a covenant with Abram, saying, Unto thy seed have I given this land, from the river of Egypt unto the great river, the river Euphrates. Notice that this resolution is written in the past tense, Have I given this land? Of course, the world disregards what the Bible says about this land and its people. So let's look at it from a political perspective. Israel fought five major wars against its Arab neighbors and was victorious each time. But something strange happened. Israel was not allowed to keep the territory it had conquered. Why not? The nations of the world, particularly the United States, have pressured Israel into surrendering areas of the promised land to the Arabs, from whom the Jews conquered the land. This is unusual because every country was established by the force of weapons. For example, Germany lost the war against communism and the rest of the world as a result. Its victors took possession of almost one-third of the country. East Prussia in Germany was divided into Lithuania, Russia, and Poland. Why? Because Germany lost the war. Even the United States was established on the basis of force. The Indians lost the battle against the Americans, which settled the land conflict. All other nations have been able to enjoy the spoils of their victory, but Israel has been denied this right. All of the nations that have conquered territory by force to establish their borders now condemn Israel for taking possession of their own territory. From such a perspective, we can understand God's wrath upon the nations as documented in Joel chapter 3 verse 2, which ends with three accusatory words to the nations. Parted my land. Except ye be converted and become as little children, ye shall not enter into the kingdom of heaven. Moreover, brethren, I declare unto you the gospel, which I preached unto you, which also ye have received, and wherein ye stand, by which also ye are saved, if ye keep in memory what I preached unto you unless ye have believed in vain. For I delivered unto you first of all that which I also received, how that Christ died for our sins according to the Scriptures, and that he was buried, and that he rose again the third day according to the Scriptures. 1 Corinthians chapter 15 verses 1 through 4. This is the gospel, the gospel of the grace of God, the good news that the Lord Jesus Christ, the Son of God, came to this earth Took, him, took on himself the nature of a man. He was crucified and died for our sins, and he rose again on the third day. I want to ask you the most important question of your life. Your joy or sorrow for all eternity depends on your answer to this question. Are you saved? This has nothing to do with how good you are or if you go to a building called a church, but are you born again? In John chapter 3 verse 7, Jesus said, "Ye must be born again. How can you be born again? First of all, you must realize that you are a sinner. Sin is anything in us that does not express or is contrary to the holy nature of our Creator, God. For instance, have you ever lied or cheated or stolen? These are all contrary to the character of God. The Bible makes it clear that all have sinned in Romans chapter 3 verse 23 when it says, For all have sinned and come short of the glory of God. Because you are a sinner, you are condemned to death. 
for the wages or the payment of sin is death. We read that in Romans chapter 6 verse 23. This includes eternal separation from God in hell. It is appointed unto men once to die, but after this the judgment. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 27. But God loved you so much he gave his only begotten son, Jesus, to bear your sin and die in your place. He hath made him to be sin for us, that we might be made the righteousness of God in him. 2 Corinthians chapter 5 verse 21. Jesus had to shed his blood and die. For the life of the flesh is in the blood. Leviticus chapter 17 verse 11. And without shedding of blood is no remission. Hebrews chapter 9 verse 22. God commendeth his love toward us in that while we were yet sinners, Christ died for us. Romans chapter 5 verse 8. Although we cannot understand how, God said my sins and your sins were laid upon Jesus and he died in our place. He became our substitute. It is true, God cannot lie. God commandeth all men everywhere to repent in Acts chapter 17 verse 30. To repent means to turn around, to confess and forsake one's sins. It's a change of mind and a change of heart and a change of attitude that abhors sins. It agrees with God that one is a sinner and also agrees that Jesus died for us on the cross. In Acts chapter 16, verses 30 and 31, the Philippian jailer asked Paul and Silas, Sirs, what must I do to be saved? And they said, Believe on the Lord Jesus Christ and thou shalt be saved. Simply believe on him as the one who bore your sin, died in your place, was buried, and whom God resurrected. His resurrection powerfully assures that the believer can claim everlasting life when Jesus is received as Savior. But as many as received him, to them gave he power to become the sons of God, even to them that believe on his name. John chapter 1 verse 12. For whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Romans chapter 10 verse 13. Whosoever includes you shall be saved means not maybe nor can, but shall be saved. If you would like to learn more about sin, salvation, the Lord Jesus Christ, or anything else concerning the Christian faith, please visit www.acceptyoubeconverted.com. Acceptyoubeconverted.com is an anti-church system, Trinitarian, free will, eternal security, King James only, Christian Zionist, Young Earth Creation, Lordship Salvation Ministry, where you can learn sound doctrine, apologetics, hermeneutics, and more. AcceptYouBeConverted.com is mobile friendly and secure from hackers and malware with sightlock. Are you looking for fellowship? AcceptYouBeConverted.com is a virtual community with daily visits from men and women around the globe. Each page includes a comment section. There is a live chat feature that is available in the desktop and mobile version where you can chat with anyone on the site at any time. Join the fun on the message board, which you can access by clicking on the link on the footer or by going to acceptyoubeconverted.proboards.com. AcceptYouBeConverted.com offers MP3 Bible teaching through Sermon Audio, which you can access through the website or through SermonAudio.com or the Sermon Audio app. Just search for It Is Written KJV. If you would like to send me your prayer requests, questions, or comments, there is a contact form on the website, also my Facebook and Twitter. Feel free to contact me anytime. I would love to hear from you. Please visit today. Support the ministry. Share with your friends and family. Share on gospel tracks. Pray for the ministry. Become a partner and help spread the truth of God's Word far and wide. Introducing new video series for YouTube channel It Is Written KJV 1611. Bible Hermeneutics. Learn how to correctly interpret the Bible. Defending the Faith. Master apologetics and be prepared to answer any objection. KJV Bible Q&A, answering various questions with the Bible. Doctrines of Devils Refuted, refuting many false doctrines with Scripture. 
False church system exposed, exposing the many problems within the modern church system. Go preach, all about spreading the gospel. False teachers exposed, Bible teachers held accountable and named by name. KJV defended, exposing corrupt modern Bible versions and teaching all things concerning the King James Bible. And more. Please subscribe and share.